Welcome friends to TV Box Top and today's video features one of the highly anticipated rock chip models that is supposed to put them back into the race of performance boxes that has been dominated by Amlogic for the past 3 years. This is the H96 Max rock chip RK3566 8GB Android 11 TV Box. This is the first TV box to feature 8GB of RAM running on Android 11 operating system. Now this model to be quite honest has some very good things about it and there are some things that are of concern. In this review we are going to look at all of them and see if Rockchip is back in the game. My full review is up next so stay tuned. Today's gaming segment features the all new PXN 9607X wireless Bluetooth gamepad featuring Nintendo Switch compatibility, Bluetooth connectivity with Android devices and Windows compatibility. It comes with a Type-C charging port, long-lasting built-in iron battery, DualShock technology, and a high-quality build for long hours of intensive gaming. See it in action during the gaming segment of this video or check the link in the description below this video. So what's inside the box is nothing out of the ordinary. You have the TV box itself. They have included a dedicated Bluetooth wireless air mouse with a voice control feature. You get one HDMI cable, a 5V 2 amps DC power adapter, and your user's manual. Its design takes the form of a rectangular shape in this black plastic housing with the H96 Max logo at the top. At the rear of the box you have one HDMI 2.0A port, one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0, one RJ45 gigabit LAN port, one optical audio port, a reset button and the DC power input. On both ends you have cooling vents. At the front you have an LED display and below the box you have 4 hard plastic feet and an LED light strip. So I'll set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So this is the launcher and it's the usual H96 Max launcher that has a basic layout with its large main icons and a shortcuts bar here at the bottom. It has a date and time widget and a one click button for freeing up system resources. However, unlike other boxes they have made, this one does not have a navigation bar or status bar, which means as an alternative I will have to install the menu button navigation bar. If you would like to see how I do this, see the link in the description below this video. Before you proceed, you first have to pair the included Bluetooth remote. On the remote, simply press and hold the OK button and the volume down button until the LED indicator starts flashing, then scan for Bluetooth devices and pair the remote with the box. Please note, I have been in contact with the developers of this box over some major issues I have with the features of this firmware. Since then I have received at least 3 firmware updates that fix some of these issues but there are still some outstanding ones that they have to resolve. How successful they will be is left to be seen. 
So even though I'm showing these issues in this video, that is subject to change if in a later firmware update they manage to fix them. Features include, and the first feature is where the major issue lie, and that is, the box has up to 8K display. But on certain TVs that has HDR feature, the box is not detecting 4K or 8K resolution. I received some footage showing that it has 4K display, but those TVs were not US brands and they did not have HDR or Dolby Vision. They have since said that they would look into it as most of their testing was done on Chinese brands. So on this LG 4K TV, I can only get 1080p resolution with no HDR, Dolby Vision or HDMI CEC options. Other features include 67 various languages, a display feature called Allow Game Mode, but enabling this feature does nothing to change the display resolution issue. It has digital surround sound audio options. It has a screen display energy saver option. It has a screen saver option and a manual reboot option. It does not have HDR display, Dolby Vision, built-in screen rotation, power key definition options, hardware monitor options, it does not have a root switch, it does not have HDMI CEC options, and it does not have a navigation bar or status bar option. Here's a look at the apps that come pre-installed, and I've already installed all my apps, and first let's have a look at its system and hardware information. Under system, it shows the Rockchip mainboard information for those interested in custom ROMs and Linux-based operating systems. It runs on 8GB of RAM, which is the first box ever to double the capacity we are accustomed to, which is 4GB, and this is DDR3 memory. It comes with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and this is the remainder after the Android installation and apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 4.0, and that's according to the product description. Its CPU is the new Rockchip RK3566, which is a quad-core Cortex A55 CPU clocked at 1.8 GHz. They have also configured it in 32 and 64-bit ABI's configuration, which means it can run both 32 and 64-bit applications. This is another feature we had to do without under some of the Amlogic models, so give Rockchip a pat on the shoulder for this feature. For display, Rockchip has taken a leap forward by implementing the Mali G52 GPU with OpenGL ES version 3.2 support. This is the same GPU that's incorporated in the high-performance Amlogic S922X models, so we'll see how that does in some 3D gaming. On the network, it shows that you have dual-band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. The operating system is Android 11, and that's it, just Android 11, because Android has stopped naming the operating systems. And below here, it shows that the box is rooted, but that's incorrect, and I'll show that to you in a moment. Under Devices, it shows that it has Vulkan support, and this is Vulkan version 1.1149. Under Thermal, you get temperature readings for both of the CPU and GPU, which is a nice feature to have. However, it looks like it's bordering on overheating. It comes with all the decoders for the playback of 4K videos, but there are no decoders such as DTS HD or Dolby Vision, and we'll see if this affects its performance during the 4K playback and the surround sound segment. And that's it for system and hardware information. It did pretty okay in this segment, and let's now see how it performs in some benchmarks and where it places on the rankings chart. First, it's RAM copy and internal storage read and write speeds. It has a RAM copy speed of 4069 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 758 megabytes per second and a write speed of 146. These scores are higher than what you would usually get on your S905X3 models, and this is due to the 8GB of RAM installed. 
In the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test, it achieved maximum bandwidth on the 5 GHz band and on the LAN port. However, the 2.4 GHz band performed well below average. This test also confirms that the LAN port is a gigabit LAN port. In the Antutu benchmark, it scored 82,044. It's not the score I expected, but it's not too bad either, and in a moment we'll see where it places on the chart. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, it scored 706 single core and 1268 multi core. It's a bit lower than anticipated, but it's not bad either. And in the graphics benchmark, it scored 7183 in the iStorm Extreme test, 762 in the Slingshot test, and 565 in the Slingshot Extreme test with Vulcan support. Not too bad either. And that's it for the benchmarks. Let's now see where it places on the chart. So the scores are in, and the new H96 Max is at position 24 in reference to Antutu benchmark scores, which is not bad at all if you're trying to make a comeback. Also, take a look at the graphics benchmarks. They are higher than most Amlogic mid-range models, which is very interesting, and we shall see how it pans out in the gaming segment. You can view this chart on my blog in full spreadsheet format where you can maximize it and compare various scores and the price comparison links. A link to this chart can be found in the description below this video. To start using the H96 Max as an entertainment streaming device, you first must know its root access and DRM information. The app shows that it's not rooted, and I've already shown that it does not have a root switch. This will not affect streaming movies and TV shows, but it will limit what apps and games you can install and run on this box. Its DRM information shows that it has Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This means that if you have a premium subscription with Netflix or other premium services, you will be able to install and use them on this box, but it will be limited to standard quality only. If you update and open YouTube, you will be faced with the annoying voice assistance that you cannot turn off. Recommended, bro, new 118, Looney Tunes 4 hours collection, Daffy Duck, port. Turn off. To disable it, simply go to the app section, open system apps, and scroll down and disable the text to speech feature. Another word of advice, don't update the YouTube app as it will freeze upon you and nothing will play. If you uninstall the updates, it will return to normal and once this is done, you can play YouTube videos in 4K resolution. The box does not come with the official version of Miracast, so they have included the Air Screen app instead. Here I'm casting my mobile phone to the box, however it's not in HD quality as you would get with the official Miracast. For those interested in customizing their launcher by installing alternative launchers and live wallpapers, you will be disappointed to know that alternative launchers do not work on this box.
Likewise, the same goes for screen rotation. It's now time to play my list of 4K videos in HDR format. But please keep in mind, this box does not have HDR display, so videos that are in HDR will likely be brighter than usual. And only a win for Bastards is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic presence on the bench as well. Atletico play. It's a typical Adriano shot. Unable to right having missed out through injury. The first time he makes that looks to me as though Costa is not going to be. So the videos played smoothly, only that it's not in HDR. I tried to play some videos in AV1 format just to see what happens and they couldn't play in both the VLC and MX player, so this box cannot play AV1 videos. Not that it could because it wasn't advertised in the description so that is expected. So now I will connect it to my 7.1 audio receiver and a test for Dolby and DTS surround sound audio formats. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy.
executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. So this test reveals that it has a Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS-HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround, and THX, and it does not have a Dolby True HD. So as promised, to begin the gaming segment, this is the all-new PXN 9607X Bluetooth Gamepad, and I will now pair it to the box by simply pressing and holding the power button for 3 seconds at the back. And it's done. It's simple as that. I will now put the Mali G52 GPU to the test under this rock chip environment and see if those performance benchmarks deliver a smooth gaming experience. Viewers, we have something different happening here with this rupture board. 
First, let me say that I'm impressed with the gaming performance of the Mali G52 with Vulcan support, and I'm also impressed that the temperature never rose into the 80s at no point during gameplay. On further investigation, I discovered that Rockchip changed the type of heatsink and how they placed it on their CPU, resulting in stable temperature during gaming. At first, I was a bit concerned during the system and hardware information, but now my fears have been put to rest now that I've seen what they can do. So it may have some issues where the firmware is concerned, but when it comes to gaming, Rockchip is back in the game. The new PXN gamepad feels really good and I highly recommend it as one to purchase if you are looking for one to use on your TV box. In summary, there are a lot of things I can say about this box that I have concerns with, but strangely enough, I really like this box. I believe with the right firmware or even a custom ROM developed by someone else, this box is going to be great. And with that said, I've come to the end of this review. Thanks goes out to Refoon for sending this box for review. And if you would like to purchase, they have provided discount coupons on the product page. See the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in the PXN gamepad featured in this video, you can get it on Amazon using the link in the description below. If you are a first time viewer to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.